There's a logger file. I don't have to explain it again, do I? I have a firm dislike for those words where people take two things and join them together. You know the thing like with dogs that are cockapoo or labradoodle make these ridiculous words they're like put and shut words even worse are people who name their house this way here's a story i remember driving back from st ives over the top road to penzance and there were just two women on the bus and one had a little dog and the other said that's a lovely little dog what sort is it well said the other woman it's half Shih Tzu and half, I thought this is going to be good, half mongrel. And it took me all my time to stop from bursting out laughing over whether anything could be half mongrel or the possibility of what someone might name this delightful little dog. Anyway, in light of that, this is the pedant's pursuit of vainglory part two on discovering Nevada Cottage. I think of myself as a wordsmith, more a word snob if the truth be known. Sit myself high on a pedant stool and see one trend that cuts to the bone. The thing that really scuppers my boat, it sends my longship sinking in flames, is the forming of a hybrid word cut and shut from another two names. Take dogs. Labradoodle, cockapoo. I'm assuming that you will agree they cost much less when they were crossbreds. It's half bulldog, half shih tzu, if you ask me. So when owners of a cottage who are stuck for ideas then decide to angle grind and weld a new name, a little part of me dies inside. Will the names change to protect the guilty? Let's try it with Anthony and Kay. K-tone sounds less like a house and more like cheap headphones you'd buy off eBay. Sandra and Barry, please tell me why Sandbar Cottage is miles from the shore. No one else at 2B are not to be praised for calling their home Elsinore. Shouldn't a cottage take its name from its location, character or view? House names should celebrate the language, not stick two together and make do. So when I found Nevada Cottage, the very kind of house name I meant, one that drips with authenticity enough to cheer up this malcontent, at last a house name with history and a story I can guarantee. So sure am I that if I am wrong, you can hang me from the pennant tree. Our hero laid low by circumstance, the price of tin enforcing his hand to an exile away from Cornwall, found him washed up in an unknown land. He wrestled hardship onto its back by mining gold out in Nevada, then came back home resurgent and placed a foot on the property ladder. I stand outside Nevada Cottage, there's a light on, I've got to know more hoping to have my theory confirmed with some resolve I knock on the door. I stare at the brass Cornish pisky and the answering takes quite a while when at last the door is opened by an old man with a disarming smile. Greetings exchanged, I come to the point. Tell me, why is your cottage so named? His laugh dislodged the build-up of phlegm. Best come through, he finally proclaimed. The missus is in the back parlour. She's working on our family tree, spending hours on that laptop of hers. Of course, it's all a mystery to me. And there she was, sat at the table, amid files which backed up his story. Eager to impress with my knowledge the pedant's pursuit of vainglory, I surmised that their cottage was named from a life better lived post downfall. Privation, migration, then gold rush, and a triumphant return to Cornwall. I stood waiting their approbation. They both smiled in treasured collusion. Nice story, boy, but wide of the mark. The drop jaw betrayed my confusion. It's much simpler than that, said the man. In a rasp not unlike Darth Vader. See, my name is Neville, oh, Nev, and this is my wife. She's called Ada. <laughs>